Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video we're going to be adding sound to our game here, our little shooter game. Um, now, I've just already found a bunch of sound assets, so let me start by just making a folder for them and just plopping them in here. I've already gone ahead and labeled them, and we can just go through the ones that I have. So essentially, we have a shot sound, we have a rifle reloading sound, we have some impact sounds for, you know, when you miss. We also have some impact sounds for when you hit. We have some various footstep sounds and a death sound. I didn't really know what to add, so I found this kind of sp splat kind of sound. Now, that sounds like this. Not really sure what it is, but I'm thinking we make some particles of some I don't know, blood splatter or whatever, and we use this. Regardless, um, also keep in mind always that we are going to be doing these things on the fly. I don't really pre-plan these videos. Uh, another thing is audio is one of those things that you can optimize quite a lot. Unity's audio handling isn't that great in terms of performance because it requires like new game objects and stuff like that, that you should probably be pooling and stuff for release. However, I want to say, since you're watching a tutorial, I'm going to assume that you're probably, uh, you know, still learning networking or learning development for that sake in general. And therefore, please, for the love of God, don't care about performance. You just got to learn to use it. You got to make something that works and then you can solve the problem of performance when it actually becomes a problem. For the most part, the audio here is not going to be what's bottlenecking your performance, but it's good to be aware that, you know, there's there's ways around it. So first things first, in terms of the performance, make sure the camera has an audio listener. It should have by default, but that's essentially, you know, the position at which the audio is going to be heard, right? So if we have an impact over here, the camera is here. Uh, this is essentially its relative position and where the audio is going to be heard from in that direction, right? So if we're turning this way, we're going to be hearing the audio in our left ear, as long as it's, you know, a 3D space audio. So one of the ways that you always can work with it, um, and it's really up to you how you want to work with it, but there, there's various ways to go about it. Uh, what I want to do is I want to try and create, let me create a new folder here that's for audio. And let me, let me create a new uh, script. That's going to be, let's call it uh, our sound player. Essentially what the sound player will do is it will take in some audio and it'll play a sound. Uh, so let's do it actually like what I wanted to do here. It takes in an audio source and then we can call play sound and it'll play whatever audio clip that we feed it. That's probably a good way to go about it. Another thing I also want to do is I want to make sure that it destroys itself when it's done playing. Now the reason for this is because I don't want them lingering around the scene. So essentially when for example we do a bullet impact, let me just explain this very easily, but for example we do a bullet impact that hits here and um, that means we now need to be playing audio from this position and the way that Unity's audio works is we need an object at that position and at least a transform. We need something at this position in order to play the audio and that's what this script essentially is going to be. But obviously we're going to spawn that thing that's going to say the sound and then it has to go away i don't want it existing in the game scene forever i want it to go away after i play the clip so let me just check what we have available here i imagine we have some length here which is the length of the clip in seconds that is perfect that's just what we need um, and as far as i'm aware i think you can actually use the destroy with the timer so we can just give it the length and maybe a little bit extra just to make sure it doesn't cut off the audio and we just want to destroy this game object so whenever that you see it it'll start playing the audio and then it'll destroy itself after a little bit so that should basically be that done now let's make a little prefab for this so this is just going to be our uh, let's call it sound play just to stay consistent we're going to put that on here and we're going to put an audio source on here as well and drag and drop that into that now this audio source we can also modify the volume of everything and so on so it might be a good idea to add a float volume here and we can just default it to one and we can then also give the audio source dot volume equals to the volume something like that and of course we can modify this as much as we want however one thing that's important is the spatial blend goes into 3d and that's essentially uh if we turn on gizmos um that's essentially that you know whether we want it to be 2d which means always heard or 3d meaning that we care about sort of spatial distancing and so on now the max distance and minimum distance is obviously so the minimum distance is if you're within the small circle here which is minimum distance of one from the center means that it'll be played at full volume or at least at least in this case you can see the curve here um, and how it changes so i think right now our camera our camera is here by the middle i think you should be able to see as i move this closer to our camera which is our audio listener uh you'll notice that it'll essentially be affecting the range down here so this is essentially the um the volume of the clip that'll be played so first of all i do want it to go all the way to zero i don't know why they for some reason don't do this standard i do want it going all the way to zero and i essentially probably just want it to curve off something like that that should be fine so the further away you are the lower it'll be we can make the fall off a little bit less or something if you want that but essentially you can play around with these settings um but yeah this should be fine and we don't want this playing on a weight because we'll be playing it manually and i think that should be fine now we can make prefab out of this so let me make that sound player prefab 
And now let's uh, go do the trick, right? So let's start with just some volume. So for example, let's start with the volume of an impact when we hit something. So going into the gun, I believe we already have, you know, where we play the effect. So you can see the environment hit here, for example, and the player hit here. So this is very easy. All we need to do is we need a reference here. So we need a reference to our uh, sound player now, which is the sound player prefab. And then I also want a reference to the two audio clips. So private audio clip. Uh, and I think I actually had a few. So let's instead make a list of audio clips. Let's do a list of audio clip. And this is gonna be the um, environment hit sounds. And it's gonna be the player hit sounds something like that and now the environment hit sounds we can use down here in the environment hit so we can uh, essentially instantiate the sound player prefab we'll want to do that at the position the rotation in this case does not matter so we can just do quaternion dot identity and then we can do dot play sound and we can essentially feed it the sound that we want it to be fed which in this case you can see we can just do the um, environment hits out count with inside random range which essentially means we're just playing a random sound that should be perfectly fine again they don't have to be hearing the same sounds and we essentially want to be doing the same thing up here for when the players hit uh, so here which will be at the local position of the player which means we need to get the transform point similar to what we do up here um yeah that should be fine uh, let's also just do this so if there is no player or that for some reason there's no player transform will just return this is essentially just a little safeguarding because both of them expect the player and the player transform to exist um all right cool and this now has to be the player hit sounds and the player hit sounds dot count so add over that too i hope this makes sense so now we can essentially populate it with the sound so let's go ahead and do that so if i go into the player we find the guns let me just take both guns and I'm gonna add the audio, sorry, that's in the art sounds, here we go. Um, so we're gonna have the environment hit sounds, that's gonna be a rock impact one, rock impact two, and rock impact three for my case. These are just MP3 files. And then there's the player hit sounds, which should be human impact one, then human impact two. I think these were like a wet cloth dropped on the ground, but I thought it sounded kind of funny. So we're going with that. Sorry if that was a bit ear -ravy. So now that these are in here, let's just go and test it. Oh, and of course we forgot to set the reference to the sound player. So let me go back into the player, into the guns, and we need to feed them the reference of the sound player prefab like that. There we go, that should do the trick. Here we go, so now we have our player here, and when we shoot it around, we're not hearing anything, which is interesting. You can see the sound player does indeed show up, and does indeed disappear again as well, which is correct. Why aren't we hearing anything? So I guess one thing we can try and do is we can try and shoot something here which should spawn it, yes, and then I can try and pause it. Like I paused it, we have the sound player here. Let's try and figure out, so I can see our audio listeners close. Wait, uh, is my, my game is muted. You know what, that... God damn, okay. Okay, but you can hear this works. You can hear this is the sound roll off and everything. I, I don't really like how it rolls off by standard, so let's just go and modify that. I would prefer a smoother curve on the roll off. I think I'd rather do something like this. I'm moving these over here, changing that there, that there, this up here, something like that. I think that is a nicer roll off. Again, it's really up to you how you want to do it. You could also just go with the linear, which honestly I don't think is a bad idea. <laughs> um, regardless, the audio now worked that I actually enabled my audio which indeed does help. So let me just go show you again that it also works with multiplayer if the other player goes shooting. You can even hear when he shoots things. So we can hear that this works well. Uh, however, I personally think the audio is a little high for this. Um, I do want to control it on a per sound basis. So I think what we should do is we should instead do private float and then we'll do environment hit volume and player hit volume um, like that. And then let's also just to make it nice, let's make them sliders, which means range from zero to one floats. Okay. So now in Unity, they should just be ranges that we should be able to play with. So if we go in here until both the guns, you can see here now let's make them maybe half as loud as they are. Maybe the hit sounds a little lower because they're going to be very close to our player. 
let's try something like that oh and of course i need to apply them so we've got on what we're actually calling the play sound i think to make maybe make it a little bit more readable let me let me split this up so it makes a bit more sense so this is the sound player that we're making here like so and this is the sound player and let me take the dot play off of it so we'll do that and then we'll do sound player dot play sound what i was doing essentially was just calling it directly which you very much can do um, but I realize also it's not necessarily as readable as just doing it like this. So let's do that instead. I think this is more readable. So first of all, we instantiate it, then we play the sound. And then in here, we want to do the environment hit volume, uh, which it's not happy about. Oh, because I put it inside the damn square bracket. There we go. Should go out here, out there, and then out here, and this will be the player hit volume. All right, let's go and try it. Let's also make sure that the player hit actually works. Let's go ahead and hit play. Go ahead and hit play here. Yeah, so now it's more reasonably, more reasonable in volume. And if you hit the player, we'll hear that hit hit sound. And you can hear here as well. If you hit the other player, you can hear that hit sound. There we go. Now we have some cool spatial audio on shooting. Awesome. Let's go ahead and integrate the rest. So let's go have a look at what we have. So this means that we've already done the human impact and the rock impact. Uh, let's do the shooting sound. I guess we don't really have reloading in this game. That might be something we can add later. It's not very advanced to do, but uh, I guess let's just do the shooting sound. That should be plenty. Um, the shooting effect, play shot effect, which we also have here, which is going to be easy. So let's just do another one of these lists and let that be um, shot sounds. And let's also do shot volume. Like so, and let, let's go and where we do the play shot effect, let's also play that. So let's do, whoops, let's do the same thing again. So var sound player equals to instantiate sound player prefab at the transform position, um, which is not where we want to do it. Uh, we probably want, I guess in our case, we can just do it at the muscle flash dot transform the position because that's at the very tip. Um, Technically, it might not be a bad idea actually putting this on the player so we don't have to spawn a sound player, but I'm feeling lazy right now. So let's just do it like this. Um, and let's have it auto fill out here. So we just do the same thing, random of that range with the shot sounds and the shot volume. Now, th what I was saying here about this sound player is we might, this might not be a very good thing to do, to be completely honest with you. The better idea would just to be to put an object on the, you know what, let's do it. Uh, let me do it properly. Um, so you guys get the idea. So let's just do it like this. I'll take an empty object. This is the shot sound. Uh, let's do shot sound player. And I'll just put that out here at the tip of the gun. Uh, and I want to do the same thing for the rifle. Oh, I guess we were on the pistol. Uh, let me check where's the muscle flash. The muscle flash is here. Yeah, okay, so we're close enough. I'll put it somewhere. Like this really doesn't have to be very precise. You're not going to be able to hear the difference. Shot sound player. And put that out here at the tip. Cool. Now we take both of those, we give it an audio source, and we give it the similar settings really. So let's go into our sound player, let's copy the component settings of this, and let's go onto both of these, and we can paste the component settings onto this paste values. There we go. Now we have essentially a similar uh, setup. Cool. Uh, now let's instead of doing this, um, let's do shot sound player here. And actually, no, we don't do that uh we all we do is just we have the shot sounds we want a reference to the sound player so let's do that serialize build private and this will be an audio source we want and that'll be the shot sound player and if we go down here now where we're doing this what we want to do is we want to do shot sound player uh like that yeah we want to do dot play one shot which is essentially what plays a single clip and we can essentially do exactly what we do right here like that Cool, that should do the trick. So now whenever we shoot as well, this should work. Let's go set up uh, the references for this. So let's go into the pistol and the, uh, actually let's go into the one at a time because we have to set the correct reference. Shot sound player is there. On the rifle, the shot sound player is there. And then the shot sound can be the same for both of them because I only have one sound with me, which is just going to be the pistol sound, this one. There we go. And so now when we shoot, we should also be able to hear a sound of shooting and other, we should also be able to hear other people's sound of shooting. Which of course does not work. Oh, I think the shot volume is probably zero right now. I just realized that is my mistake. Yes, it is indeed zero. Let's just put it to, I don't know how loud it is, 0 0.4 maybe. Uh, 
I personally think it's probably a little bit too loud. But you can hear them shooting from a distance here. Yeah, one thing we can actually do is if we are the shooter, so if it's owner, we want to do one thing, otherwise we'll do another thing, which is essentially going to be the exact same. So what I want to do is if we are the owner, I want to lower this volume by, let's just say some margin. Again, you could make this a variable, but this is really just to make it lower for the one actually shooting. So it's not so loud, but you can still hear others just fine. So let's test this theory out. Yeah, this is a lot lower immediately. I just think it's better. It affects the problem. Okay, cool. This seems to work very well. So far, so good. And now let's move into, let's just do one last sound. Let's do the death sound. That's a bit more fun, making a little death effect. So let's just go ahead and let's take one of the effects we already have. We have the blood impact effect and let's just start modifying this really. So one of the first things I want to do is I want to shape it up at the minus 90. This is going to last for a bit longer. So let's do two, one, four. Let's do some higher speeds. So it's one, two, three. Let's make it generally bigger, which is will be 0 0.2 to 0 0.5. It's way too big, way, way, way too big. Do more of them. So let me have them burst out like 30. Um, and I guess let's do a circle instead. They are still way too slow. So let me do two to five. I like that. It's like an explosion the player makes when he dies. Cool. Let's do a death effect. Let's not make this a prefab of the existing one. Let's make a new prefab, have the death effect. Cool. So now let's go on to the player health. And let's do a realize field, private reference to the sound player prefab. Let's also do a, oops. I think I only had a single effect of the player dying. You can of course make a list as we did before, but I'm just gonna make an audio clip. So I'm gonna call that death sound. And let's also just make a Serialize field, private, float, death, audio, let's just do 0 0.5 by default. And now of course, just to make it nice, make the range again from 0 to 1. When the object dies, we essentially destroy it. So I guess what we could just do, we could probably just use that to be completely honest with you. So we can just do, uh, no, you shouldn't be instantiating things, not destroy, I just realized. So let's not do that. Let's instead do a... Can we do this in times? Let's do an off service RPC run locally true. And let's do a private void play death effects. And then let's actually also get the particle we just made private particle system death particles. Cool. So, what we do is we will spawn the death particles. So, let's do instantiate death particles. At the transform dot position, let's do plus vector three dot up. And the reason for this, and let's do quaternion dot identity. The reason for the vector three dot up is because his position, his actual position, is by his feet, and I do want it to come out like his belly. So I just wanted to move it up by one unit. That's what I'm doing here. Let's do a var sound player, and let's also instantiate the sound player at the transform dot position plus vector three dot up at the quaternion identity, and let's do a sound player to play sound, the death sound at the death volume. And now we can play the death effect from in here whenever the server kills me. Cool. Let's try and see if this works. And I hope this makes sense. Now let's go and set it up on the player. So we have the play health, which needs the sound player prefab. We need the death particles. We need the death sound, which is that. And we have the volume. Cool. Let's try and see if this does work. There we go. I'm pretty sure I heard the splatter effect. Let's try and go and do it on the other guy. My mouse for some reason doesn't lock here on my host. Almost dead now. So he's gonna die on this next shot here. Yeah, and there we go. We heard the splatter sound. We can probably make that one a bit louder since it's a, an impactful one, but you get the idea. This, uh, this pretty much works. And I, I hope you learned something about how to work with sounds. I know I went over, uh, I went over pretty much everything quite quickly. Uh, even though the video is pretty long um, but essentially all you really have to think about is just that everybody has to play the sound right so in our case we do it in observers rpc uh, which is probably one of the easiest ways to call things for everybody um, and yeah so i hope the video was helpful to you i hope you enjoyed please do leave a like comment and subscribe and i hope to see you in the next one